Micrornas are small molecules that regulate gene expression, uh, discovered relatively recently. Uh, the field of microRNA has been exploding, and there are lots of people interested in this field. When you get to work to microRNA, let's say you identify microRNA of one microRNA of interest. Let's say, let's say you work on uh, hippocampal neurons, and you identify specific microRNA, a few microRNAs that are most strongly and specifically expressed in these cells. And you are answering, uh, you're trying to answer what to address the functions of these microRNAs. What's the approaches you can take, basically? And uh, it ultimately comes to what genes are going to be regulated by these microRNAs. Several years ago, this question was very difficult to address because we could only guess what mRNAs would be regulated by microRNAs. So it took uh, a number of years, and I want to mention the name of David Bartel and a few other groups that have done a terrific work to develop uh, prediction algorithms that would predict binding between microRNA and mRNAs. Initially, they were purely computational theoretical predictions because, you know, something in is new, you predict, you need time to validate these predictions. When you have more validations, you can b go back and uh, correct or improve your algorithms. With time, uh, these algorithms became more and more accurate. And now, uh, what's happening, you have a microRNA, you usually go uh, to your computer, and you, for each microRNA, you can find, by a specific algorithm, you can find maybe a number of hundreds, sometimes thousands of mRNAs as potential predicted targets. So uh, it doesn't make your life very easy because, you know, it's just difficult to comprehend that one microRNA can regulate 100 mRNAs. And indeed, in a specific cellular context, in a specific cell, it usually does not happen that one microRNA regulates lots of downstream molecules. So how can you uh, link microRNA regulator with downstream pathways? Uh, and it's very interesting because apparently uh, a lot depends on what mRNAs are expressed in the cell of your interest. Obviously, if the message is not there, it's not going to be regulated. So uh, practically, it also mean that, means that microRNA can have different functions in different cell types, depending on what targets are available, what repertoire of targets, and what the levels of the targets that are in different cell types. Just to give you an example, there is a microRNA uh, that we are studying in brain tumors uh, that we believe regulates cell division, cell cycle, because it regulates a certain subset of mRNAs. In breast cancer, it seems that the same microRNA is also very important, but it regulates totally different genes. And therefore, it does not regulate cell cycle there, but rather promotes uh, motility and inv invasiveness of breast cancer cells. So this is one kind of questions you can ask, mechanistic questions. What are pathways regulated by a microRNA, and what targets are regulated by a microRNA? There are many. Uh, practical questions that are people interested. So first thing, of course, is biology. By now, we know quite a bit about microRNA biology. There are techniques developed. Uh, we can uh, pretty well discriminate between microRNA. Uh, remember, those are very small molecules. So again, they are, in a way, all pretty similar, a lot more similar than large molecules. Because for large molecules, you always can design a probe that is not similar to anything else. But when you're talking about microRNAs, your space for designing specific probes that would recognize this molecule is a lot more limited. So now these things, these tools are developed. We can pretty well discriminate even between very similar microRNAs that still may have not totally identical functions. I think the big questions now are uh, coming really from medicine and relate to how we can uh, use these molecules because they regulate all practically all normal processes in our cells, but also lots of pathological processes, probably all pathological processes. So microRNAs are heavily involved in development. They're involved in metabolism. They're involved in our aging as they regulate 
majority of our genes. But on the other side, they are also can be regarded as uh, pathological molecules. The dysregulation of micron expression, if we elevate levels of some of them or we reduce levels of some others, may have very, very strong implications in humor, human diseases. The first uh, class of diseases that uh, really um, I think benefited a lot from microRNA discovery is cancer. So uh, from 2002 to 2003, and three people started to notice that uh, first of all there are mutations in microRNA binding sites, or there are in human if you get. Uh, gene encoding for microRNA deleted, it can by itself lead to cancer. To study function of uh, a molecule, a gene, in our case a microRNA, uh, the usual tool is to manipulate with a molecule. We can't mutate normally the microRNA just because they are very short again, uh, but we can change the levels. We can elevate the levels or inhibit the levels. And when you basically want to shut down expression of specific microRNA in order to understand its function, that's a sort of a classical approach. To understand function of something, you want to remove it from the system and see how the system reacts. So in this field, we need uh, to develop the tools to manipulate with microRNAs. And uh, over years, over the last years, it's been sort of a struggle to uh, in particularly inhibit microRNA because they are small. This inhibition is based on antisense oligonucleotides, so those are molecules, inhibitors are complementary molecules, very heavily modified chemically. As a, any small molecule, they can be totally specific. So in addition to binding to microRNA, they will bind to some other RNA in the genome. So the effect that microRNA inhibitors may have, they are not always only through the microRNA. There is no total specificity in the inhibitors, and that was one of the big problems. There are uh, lots and lots of publications, probably it's worth also mentioning that are lots and lots of artifacts published in the field because the technology was not perfect or was not well developed. For example, lots of studies are based on these manipulations with, you know, people add microRNA inhibitor to the system, uh, they see certain phenotype and they address this phenotype to microRNA. But in fact, it was not always specific and for this reason sometimes using these tools that are suboptimal are, uh, could be misleading and you know what I'm saying to my students is that you really it's not enough just to read the paper and to say okay this re paper shows this microRNA has that kind of effect if they didn't use tools that are specific uh, you really can't make this conclusion it can be lots of other things involved there is now sort of a no no novel theory behind the microRNA field microRNA may have additional role. So microRNA regulates expression of mRNAs, messenger RNAs, but it may be the case that mRNAs can talk to each other through microRNA. Because each microRNA potentially can regulate numerous targets, you can imagine this sort of scenario. You uh, reduce amount of specific mRNA in the field. So the microRNA that was bind to this, to this mRNA would be release to repress other potential, tar potential targets. So you, by reducing amount of one mRNA, in fact, you can reduce many other targets of the same microRNA. So it's been proposed uh, again here in Harvard Medical School by uh, uh, Paolo Pandolfi a few years ago as a theory. And now there are some examples suggesting that this theory might be uh, practical in many cases. And indeed, molecules in, this, in the cell, large molecules, long molecules, can uh, talk to each other through microRNAs. It also gives additional sense to some genes such as pseudogenes. So pseudogenes are genes that evolutionary um, stop to be functional. They encode it for proteins, 
a long time ago and then they lost some important elements and they do not encode for proteins anymore, they don't produce proteins. So uh, scientists really didn't know uh, why they're still in the genome, but what seems to happen sometimes, these pseudogenes can also absorb microRNAs, they can also work as targets for microRNAs, sponges for microRNA, and if such non-functional or non-producing gene uh, works as microRNA sponge, in fact, it would lead to the repression of functional mRNA targets of this message. So in fact, you can imagine it's a huge space for combinatorial kind of regulation. It's an extremely complex system. It's not very clear how to study it uh, in wet experiments biologically. There are more and more computational methods developed. Uh, it's a lot of bioinformatics involved, uh, but it basically poses a whole new layer of questions we can uh, ask now. And I think it's really Im amazingly interesting field because um, it changes the way we think about uh, cellular functions and regulation of gene expression more generally. Talking about the future of the field, um, there, it's a huge amount of biology behind that is remains to be studies, studied and we are getting to the really new layers of uh, questions. Um, microRNA probably will be more implicated um, within the field of uh, longer non-coding RNA because microRNA probably will interfere and interact with other modes of regulation by other non-coding RNAs. There will be a whole new field of microRNA uh, in medicine and using microRNAs and for human therapeutic applications and diagnostics. And I think this will be really a um, huge uh, breakthrough that uh, general public, not just scientists, should be interested about. <laughs>